So why am I not using 464? Uh, basically because I don't want to use a wax anymore. Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Today I'm going to be talking about why I no longer use 464 soy in my candles. Well, let me modify that why I no longer use 464 alone in my candles. More on that later. Now, this might come as a shock to some of you because I was pretty much married to 464 soy uh, for about three years now. Well, I've used multiple waxes, but this wax has been a staple in my candle making career for three plus years. And I've ordered it in pallets, which basically means hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And it's been used in a good number of my candle collections. I was basically married to it for about three years. So in today's video, I'm going to be spilling the tea on why I no longer use this wax. So if you're interested, then just keep on watching. So why don't I use 464 anymore? In one word, inconsistency. If you get a good batch, you're good. Uh, you can make great candles excellent candles. Yes, you can have frosting and you can have cratered tops, but if you get past that, you can make some excellent candles with this wax. However, I don't know that I would recommend this wax to a beginner anymore because, well, it's just inconsistent. I'm constantly testing my candles, even candles that I've had in my line for three plus years, I am constantly batch testing them. I can tell you that that one batch out of 10 that just didn't perform the way that I needed it to, even when I used the same fragrances, the same wicking, the same everything, um, that one batch out of 10 that just didn't perform uh, like the other nine, that's just not good enough for me. That's just not workable for me. Uh, that's a whole batch of candles that I'm having to toss because basically I'm not comfortable selling them to my customers. They don't meet the expectations of an Earth Glow candle. And furthermore, it's not realistic to test every scent every time you make a batch of candles. Now, certainly us as candle makers are always telling you test, test, test. And we certainly all, those of us who are successful at it, uh, tend to enjoy testing and we tend to be okay with doing a lot of it. But testing uh, every single time you make every single batch of candles is, is just a little overkill to a point where um, it's not really workable for most people. It's simply not realistic. And that's what I found myself doing with this wax. Um, I was good for about the first year and a half, two years with it. But in the last year, it seemed like there were just a lot of bad batches or a lot of batches that were not um, you know, I'd order a pallet and I'd have a couple batches on that pallet and by batches I mean 45 pound containers um, that just did not perform like the other ones and uh, this is from multiple suppliers. Um, this is from, I'd ordered it from Aztec and from the Flaming Candle both and um, they obviously source their 464 from AAK, um, formerly the Golden Brands, I believe, um, is the manufacturer. And this is not just something that I'm saying. I know there's a lot of candle makers that talk about the inconsistency of 464. Um, I know that uh, Wade Thomas is one of them, and I believe uh, Jeff Stanley has talked about it too. And I would have to wholeheartedly agree with them that uh, this wax, um, as I said, getting into my third year with it, I really started encountering inconsistency. And the only way I really realized that was by continual product testing on my own part. Um, I never really had customers complaining uh, about the wax and I do guarantee all my candles. So if a candle doesn't perform the way that um, makes a customer 100% satisfied, they're always welcome to reach out to me and they know that I do guarantee my product. I want them to really um, love it and enjoy their candles. So I will put that disclaimer out that I didn't have customers complaining to me. So I'm getting off on a tangent here, but the basic point is, is that it's not realistic to test every scent in your candle line every time you make candles. And you all know that I'm sitting here with a candy thermometer, one of those stick thermometers that you literally put in there. And I mean, candy thermometers are going to be as accurate as it gets. Those things are measuring to the degree very precisely. I do use infrared as well, but when I'm looking for those really precise temperatures, you all know that I'm sitting there with a candy 
candy thermometer um, and measuring everything to the degree and I'm stirring timing my stirring um, you know for the exact two minutes everything is very precise the temperature that I'm heating my wax to the relative temperature of the room um, I mean the humidity may fluctuate slightly with the season but come on I mean for for all intents and purposes my process is very very consistent so the bottom line is while i am confident in the consistency of my process from batch to batch i am not confident in the consistency of the 464 soy wax from batch to batch and that's really it uh, again when this wax works well it works well you can really make some excellent candles with great hot throw so I said earlier that I do still use it. Well, kind of. As I said, in the four to five years that I've been making candles, I've batch tested pretty much everything. In other words, every time that I make candles, I'm pretty much testing one out of every single scent um, that I make. And I don't really recommend that. It's really overkill. It's not realistic for most people um, to test candles constantly that they've made in their line for years and years. Uh, I do recommend periodic testing because certainly sometimes things can change in the wax formula that manufacturers may or may not tell you about. Um, and sometimes things can change here and there from batch to batch. But the point is, is that I can tell you with 464, when you blend it well with other waxes, it seems to stabilize the wax is the best word that I've come up with. And by that, I mean that it seems to help the 464 to be more consistent in terms of the results that you get from it. So I haven't given up on this wax entirely, but if I find something else that meets the needs of my business and that I like better, I will be canceling Christmas entirely on 464 soy. So the last question that I know most of you are wondering is, what wax am I using? What waxes am I using? Well, I'll link my video above on how I formulated my own wax blend and some of the considerations that went into it. But basically, I've been using variations of that wax blend. In other words, blending soy wax with beeswax and oftentimes coconut wax and or other vegetable waxes. And that's essentially what I'm doing for all my candles now. I'll link in the description a video on how I make my Wanderlust candles, as well as a video on how I make my Wanderlust tins, which uh, again, those are the Woodwick tins. And they do use a slightly different formula than I use for the wax blend in my Wanderlust jars, just because the tins, I find they tend to burn a little bit hotter. They're made of tin material, which is much more conductive of heat um, than the glasses in the jars, even the electroplated glass. But anyways, in most all the videos, I share in the description box my exact formulations for uh, each of the wax blends that I do. However, I wanna put up the huge caveat that I don't recommend necessarily at all that you use or even try my wax formulations, especially if you are new. If you're a new candle maker, you need to be using a wax that is readily available that you can get from lots of suppliers, that has lots of reviews and lots of troubleshooting videos because otherwise you're going to find this a not a very rewarding um, start to candle making. Uh, if you use some of my wax blends, you're often buying things from multiple suppliers, which is a lot of shipping and a lot of kind of rigmarole of getting things all across the country. And again, I just recommend using a readily available wax with lots of reviews and lots of troubleshooting videos, just so that way you can get off to a good start and you can find help when you need it and where you need it because my wax blends don't really have any troubleshooting videos because nobody's really using it. But part of why I do it is because I love science and I'm a biochem major and I'm just passionate about creating my own formulas. I've also been testing out a lot of other soy waxes and coconut waxes just to kind of get a feel for how other waxes perform and also to help answer some of the questions that I've gotten in the comments. I know a lot of people have asked me questions about waxes as I mentioned in an earlier video that I just haven't been able to answer very well just because my experience has been limited primarily to soy wax, uh, the 464 soy wax, as well as beeswax and then coconut oil. But again, mixing that coconut oil in with the other waxes just in my own formulations. And I really wanted to have a baseline that involved lots of other waxes that are the natural type waxes um, that are gonna be marketed like your cocoa apricot cream, your satin soy, your makesy waxes, your uh, coconut 83, your number seven slash soy bliss, etc. and etc. I mean, we could keep going on and on with the list and I'm sure I won't be able to test
test all of them, but those are some of the ones that I've kind of been playing around with. And there's a handful of other ones too that I can't even remember right now that I've purchased and will be testing. But I will have to say just from the early results, and I've got videos to come just showing kind of my process on these, uh, the Cocoa Apricot Cream, uh, the Seda Serica, I believe it's called by Calwax, and the uh, Number 7 slash Soy Bliss. Uh, the results are looking very, very good on those waxes. And I've got more to share on those in a future video, but of everything I've tested so far, those are my favorites. Anyways, I think that's gonna be all for today. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments box. And I look forward to kind of hearing what waxes you all use. I know we've got a lot of users, uh, Seda Serica, as well as the Soy Bliss. I know a lot of you like the IGI 6006 wax, um, and I know that a lot of you like ProBlend uh, 600, I believe it's called, um, and some of the Makesy waxes I know are really popular. I know some of you also use Soy 10, which I've been testing that one uh, actually for the last four or five months on and off, as most of you know, I've done a couple videos on that one. But anyways, if you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and look. I look forward to seeing you all in more of my upcoming videos, uh, testing waxes. Let me know in the comments what you all use if you're open to sharing. I'm really curious um, if you all could, you know, drop your favorites in the comments and maybe I will test them out if I haven't already uh, purchased them. Anyways, thank you so much again for watching this video and for joining me on my candle making journey and for sharing the joy of candle making. I know it's been really crazy these last couple months. Uh, I've been just swamped with basically trying to make about 100 50 to 200 candles a week. The volume at which I've been selling the candles uh, seems like it's going up again. It went down for a while and now it seems like we've gotten a lot more candle sales overall. And then I'm also looking into doing some markets. As most of you know, I've never done a farmer's market and I'm really excited about that. So just kind of preparing for all that as well as my other you know, business stuff, school stuff and everything. Um, but I really appreciate you all for bearing with me. I'm definitely trying to still keep making videos. I really enjoy doing it, um, but I just had to kind of slow down for those reasons. Um, but anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.